In the last video on the 8N tractor, you guys saw me build and install this auxiliary switch panel and these light mounting tabs. Now the reason that we did all that is because I wanted to update the lighting on the 8N and today my hope is to take these lights from Oxbeam and get them all mounted up and test them out. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Where the last video ended, these light mounting points were drying. It was really cold and foggy that day, so it took a little bit longer for the paint to dry than I think it normally would have. But everything's good to go now, so we can mount these up to the tractor and start getting these lights on here. Now, if you watched the last video on this project, you saw these rear mounting tabs in pretty great detail. And they look pretty good. Actually, they look better painted up now than I think they did when they were raw. I ended up making entirely new tabs for the front facing lights. And the reason is that the factory ones that were on this loader frame, they they would have located the light in, in a bad place. And what would have ended up happening is when the arms of the loader were all the way up, it would have ended up hitting the light. So instead of drilling new holes in the old mounting brackets, I decided to just make entirely new ones. And uh, let me show you what I came up with. I've got the old light tab and the new one laid out here on the table next to each other, just so you guys can see the difference. The main difference, or the, the one that we care about the most, is that these new, tabs are going to relocate that light in about an inch and then that's going to give it enough clearance so that the loader arms don't hit it when they're completely raised. The new lights have a much wider footprint than anything that they were mounting up back in the 50s so that's why I made these new ones a lot wider where the light mounts. Um, they're actually they turned out a little bit wider than they needed to be which is not going to hurt anything other than the looks so let's get them mounted up on the tractor so we can get these lights bolted up. Mounting tabs are in place and they look good other than the fact that they really stand out because they are freshly painted. But now the fun part, we can install the lights. For the rear lights on the tractor, I'm going with these three inch LED pod lights. These come with a clear lens or an amber lens, but I'm going for the clear. Not really sure where the tilt needs to be quite yet but I'm gonna say a little bit below horizontal and when it gets dark, we can take this thing outside and actually get them aimed up properly. I'll leave them kind of loose for now so I can play with the angle uh, when we get them wired up. For the front, we're going with these 5D Pro Series 5-inch custom driving lights. It's a mouthful, but I'm really anxious to see how bright these things are. One thing that I noticed about the 5-inch the lights is that the ends of the wires don't come with any connector on them, and the wiring harness does. So I'm going to have to add some male spade connectors to this light in order for it to hook into the wiring harness.
All right, these connectors look good now and this light's ready to go on the tractor. Well, I have to say these things are looking pretty mean. So now <laughs> what I would call the fun part is over. Uh, you know, you get the payoff when you get the lights mounted up and get to see how they look. But really they're meaningless if they don't work. So now we need to wire these things up. Possibly the coolest part about this kit is that it does come with a complete wiring harness. All that you have to do, at least it looks like, all you have to do is just plug these two wires into the battery then you've got your wire here that will plug into your switch and then your two leads here that go to the lights. So they've actually taken probably the worst part about installing lights and made it about as easy as it can be. So my plan to, 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 to sort of tackle this is I'm just gonna unplug this relay and it gives you a little mounting hole right here on the relay. There's a spot under the dash on the 8 end that I think uh, I've got some clearance behind some sheet metal and I'm just going to tech screw this to that. So that'll be a good mounting point for this. And then I can plug the relay back in. It's right next to the battery so I can run these wires to the battery. And then the rest of it is just a matter of routing everything and zip tying it up out of the way. And I'm just going to give it a try. <laughs> got our fuse and battery leads right here. So the switch cable is going to be up here under the hood. The battery leads obviously are going to be under the hood. So the other two going out are going to go back to the light. So those are the ones that are going to kind of be a little bit harder to route. Um, messy wiring, it, it just drives me crazy and it's not to say that I never have it, but I don't like it. All right, wire routing montage. Let's do it. routed on this tractor as best as I can. I mean, obviously you're gonna still see some just because of the nature of what this thing is. But I guess the one thing that I did have going for me is this loader frame gave me a lot of places to run wires. So the only thing that's left to do now is to hook both of these systems, the front lights and the rear lights up to the battery and flip the switch and see what happens. Yeah, it appears tight. All right, the wires are run. Everything is hooked up and buttoned up. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to hit the switch. So it probably looks a lot darker to you guys than what it actually is. Okay, first switch. I don't even know if this is the front or the back, actually. That's the back, wow. Okay, those need to be aimed for sure, but they work. And I like how the switches light up too. So having this closed door in front of the tractor is actually really nice for aiming these lights. I can get them pretty even and about where I think they should be. But the true test is gonna to be tonight when it's dark. I'm gonna to have to pull this thing out and see what it does. I've started the tractor now to get the alternator working and I'm very curious to see if I can see any voltage drop on my voltmeter when I turn the lights on. But 
you can see there was a little bit the needle moved but it's still running at 14 volts at idle so i think we're gonna be fine All that's left now is the night test, so let's pick up the video there. It's been several hours since completing the light installation, and as you can see, it's plenty dark outside now. So before it starts raining again, I think we should pull this tractor outside, fire up these lights, and see how they look. to say about it these things are awesome super bright i'm actually looking forward to putting hay out in the dark now thanks for hanging out in the shop with me today guys and i hope i'll see you again on farmer tyler ranch mm -hmm.